Well, again, on the topic of EVs, and again, some of the technologies that we're seeing, not just batteries, but also, uh, again, I think comes from one of our fan questions, which is, uh, you talked about EV stocks. Uh, what's your take on EV, uh, on, sorry, what's your take on the year of AV stocks? Uh, again, the, uh, the concept of autonomous vehicles uh, and related right. to LiDAR technology. Yeah, so um, autonomous vehicles are behind electric vehicles in terms of the adoption curve, obviously. Um, mm -hmm. A lot of people are driving electric vehicles. None of us are driving autonomous vehicles. Mm -hmm. um, but the autonomous vehicle revolution is progressing very nicely. And what we're seeing is step one of this revolution is actually, and it makes complete sense, is the delivery of goods, not the delivery of people. Um, okay. Domino's is delivering pizzas autonomously using little autonomous cars, autonomous robots, basically, mm -hmm. um, in Houston, Texas. 7-Eleven, I believe, is, has deployed an autonomous delivery service. Um, Kroger has deployed an autonomous delivery service. Uh, Uber Eats is looking into it. So you're starting to see Two Simple just completed a complete um, drive route autonomous trucking test in, in Phoenix, Arizona. So. You're seeing successful deployment of autonomous vehicle technology is, as it relates to the delivery of goods. And that makes sense because if there's a mistake in the delivery of people uh, in an autonomous vehicle, you're talking about <laughs> yeah. you know, a potential loss of life. Um, mm -hmm. When you're looking at a mistake in the autonomous delivery of goods, you're talking about maybe somebody loses a $200 grocery order. Mm -hmm. um, like it's replaceable. Uh, yeah. The cost there is not very large. And so that's why this revolution is starting with the uh, transportation of goods. And we're seeing that across the United States. We're also seeing expansion into the delivery of people. Uh, Waymo has a uh, autonomous ride sharing service in Phoenix. It's been running for a while. They just expanded that into San Francisco. Uh, throughout cities in China, there are autonomous ride sharing services as well. These mm -hmm. services are all in beta mode, uh, mostly invite only, uh, not widespread. But the fact that they are doing it, the mm -hmm. fact that this is a real thing that's happening, just goes to show that we are very near the inflection point uh, with autonomous vehicle technology to the point where AVs are very near to becoming where EVs were two or three years ago. Um, you know, mm -hmm. electric vehicles really shot into the scene 2019, 2020. That's really when EVs started to you know, have their, their hockey stick growth. It mm -hmm. feels like that 2019, 2020 moment for autonomous vehicles is probably in the 2023, 2024 range. It sort of feels mm -hmm. like that's when you could really start to see interest in these uh, companies, the prices of these stocks, and the usage of this technology really kind of explode higher. So that's where my timeline is for the autonomous vehicle market. So uh, I know that uh, we've talked about the technology behind um, autonomous vehicles, uh, primarily being LiDAR. Uh, can you t explain a little bit about what that is? And then also, are there other technologies that we should be looking at when it comes to autonomous vehicles? Yeah, so this is a, a real hot topic in the field of autonomous vehicles. Um, there are basically three ways you can get base, uh, big assumption here. Um, the way to get a autonomous car to work, the way mm -hmm. to get a car to drive itself effectively and in all situations, is to give the car a human-like ability to see and sense its surroundings. Because if it can do that, then it can react to those surroundings and drive itself in any situation. So there are three ways that you can do that. Um, one is through vision. That's mm -hmm. a camera. You can put cameras on the car, and the car can use that, that camera. The camera looks out, fetches computer vision data, feeds it back into the system. Now it can see. Um, the other way, or another way, is LiDAR, which you just talked about, which is essentially light. Uh, what this does is it beams, in a 360-degree fashion, lasers out all over the place. <laughs> and then normally, uh, this is not how all LiDAR works, but the most common time-of-flight LiDAR is that it beams the laser out, the laser hits an object, and it comes mm -hmm. back to the sensor. The sensor measures the time of that flight to determine how far away that object is. And if you do it with enough granularity, you can then also build the shape of the object, and you can create a essentially a 3D replication of the surrounding environment of the car. So mm -hmm. that's LiDAR. And then the third is radar, which is just 
sound. You know, we've heard of radar in submarines, we've heard of radar in other um, transportation devices before, so that's not really a new technology. Um, there is no real clear understanding of what the best way to get the car to see is. Tesla mm -hmm. is using a vision only approach. They're just using cameras. Okay. Uh, some are using LiDAR only. Some are using all three together. I'm of the personal opinion and of the engineers I've talked to in this space and of some of the, the largest uh, minds in this space, the, uh, the biggest people in this space, mostly believe that the future of autonomous vehicle technology includes the full stack. So okay. it includes radar, it includes LIDAR, and it includes camera. And that's because the camera, while good, uh, they're low resolution. The human eye has incredibly high resolution, and it's like 100 times that of a camera you're gonna stick on a car. So if you really wanna replicate the vision of a human on a car, you're mm -hmm. gonna have to slap 100 or so cameras on there, and that's mm -hmm. just unfeasible because you're just basically putting cameras everywhere. It's gonna be bulky, it's gonna be super expensive, not economic, so camera has limitations. Um, LiDAR can fix some of those limitations, not all of them. Radar can fix some of those limitations, not all of them, but when put together, the full stack is what's going to allow the, the car enough redundancy to mm -hmm. create a safe, autonomous driving environment. So I'm of the belief that all three are super necessary, Cameras, there's not much differentiation that can happen there because a camera is a freaking camera mm -hmm. and everybody makes them. Mm -hmm. Radar, very old technology, somewhat commoditized, not very expensive, not high margin. LiDAR is where the investment potential is because LiDAR is a very complex technology. LiDAR is a very expensive technology and only very few companies globally have figured out how to cost-effectively manufacture good enough LiDAR to work on cars. Those mm -hmm. companies will be able to monopolize the market, sell a lot, of that, a lot of those LiDAR sensors at very high margins and create huge profits. So in my opinion, the best way to play the autonomous vehicle revolution is either to A, buy the autonomous vehicle software companies, which we haven't really talked about, mm -hmm. or B, yeah by the, the LiDAR suppliers. And so that's where a name like Luminar comes in. I think Luminar is, is a really strong player in this space. Mm -hmm. And there are some other smaller companies out there, I'm not gonna say their names on this podcast, but that are also very interesting plays on the, the LiDAR revolution. But I believe that Luminar is probably the, the best in breed option uh, for LiDAR. And by extension, one of the best plays on autonomous vehicles anywhere. Aside from, from the investment potential, the adoption of autonomous vehicles uh, moving forward, you, we, you know, we talk about that the, the, when a technology is new, it costs a lot because it's new. Not a lot of people know how to make it. The Luminar, to your point, is the, one of the better companies that are doing it. Uh, what is, when is, are we going to start seeing those costs start to decrease and uh, fall to where this adoption can start uh, happening a lot more um, frequently? Are you talking about LiDAR specifically? Yeah, LiDAR, yeah. So uh, the cost decline curve there is, is very, very large. Uh, the cost had plummeted significantly. LiDAR back in the day that was made by Velodyne, which was kind of like the godfather of LiDAR, mm -hmm. uh, not too long ago, less than 10 years ago, was fetching like $75,000 a laser um, mm -hmm. or a system, a sensor. Okay. Today, Luminar can integrate its uh, LiDAR onto an automotive vehicle for less than $1,000. So mm -hmm. we've gone from 75K to 1,000 uh, within the span of less than 10 years. So mm -hmm. the cost of client curve there is, is very impressive. And among the folks I talk to, getting that number down to 500, 400, 300, 200 is entirely possible and plausible within the next few years. Mm -hmm. That cost decline curve, of course, is going to spur adoption of LiDAR because the big thing is if I'm selling a $40,000 vehicle, I can't add a $75,000 laser mm -hmm. on it. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but I can add a $1,000 laser. And okay. I definitely can add a $500 laser or a $200 laser. And you have mm -hmm. to remember that uh, there is no number of LiDAR sensors that a car would need to be truly safe in an autonomous vehicle environment. But... I think that perhaps the best number is around three or four. Mm -hmm. So you're gonna wanna see a car have three or four LiDAR sensors on it. 
Okay. That means that if it's a thousand bucks today, that's an additional three or four thousand dollars on a forty thousand dollar car. That's a ten percent uh, increase on the input cost, or because the input costs are probably like thirty, it's greater than a ten percent. Um, uh, bump in the input cost. So mm-hmm. that's not entirely feasible. You put that number down to 200 or 300, now all of a sudden you're talking about 600, 800, 900 dollars in total to integrate all the LiDAR into the car. Mm-hmm. That's a much smaller uptake in cost. So as this, these, the cost decline curve continues, as these costs continue to plummet, that's going to help spur adoption. We actually already are seeing LiDAR being integrated into some high-end vehicles. Lucid, we just talked about them. One of the mm-hmm. reasons I like them is I think they are doing everything right on the autonomous vehicle front. One of the things they're doing right is integrating LiDAR. Their cars are partially self-driving and they are equipped with LiDAR. They are the first cars in North America to be delivered to consumers that have automotive LiDAR on them. So you Mm -hmm. are seeing LiDAR coming to market. Volvo is rolling out LiDAR, uh, Luminar LiDAR, uh, in Mm -hmm. some of their higher end vehicles this year as well. So you're gonna start seeing LiDAR come to market in 2022. Um, Another note here is that Too Simple, we talked about them earlier, they're an autonomous trucking company. Mm -hmm. They just completed a super, super impressive, super, super rare, never, never been done before test in Phoenix, Arizona, where they had a truck, they took the driver out, they put their self-driving system in it, and the truck, without anybody in it, drove, we're talking about a class eight truck here, Mm -hmm. drove itself 80 miles on highways, on surface streets, stoplights with traffic, made turns, pedestrians, did all that stuff without any incidents. Um, And now they've done about, I think it's like eight or nine test drives since then with Mm -hmm. that. That company that is doing that, too simple, very impressive. What's What's the core tech there? It's LiDAR, made specifically <laughs> by a company called Ava. So okay. pretty much all of the successful self-driving stories you've heard of mm-hmm. are powered by LiDAR. Um, so you are seeing it in market. Okay. That's why 2022 is going to be this sort of like introductory year mm-hmm. for LiDAR. And then 2023, I believe, is the, the blowout year. The gotcha. year when all of a sudden a lot more things start to have LiDAR. 2024, I think it goes mainstream. So that's why I said, when you asked me earlier what my timeline is here, 23, 24 is when I think this market really starts to hockey stick. 22 is a great time to get in it then as Mm -hmm. the market gets introduced to these technologies, starts to get comfortable with them in the real world. And that's when you're gonna start to see some slow and gradual price appreciation before the hockey stick growth in 23, 24. Get in early so you don't miss the hockey stick. That's my two cents. Thanks for watching HGI Clips. For the full episode, head on over to our sister channel at Hypergrowth Investing by clicking the link in the description or listen to the podcast on any of your favorite streaming platforms. We make new episodes every Wednesday, so make sure to check it out and subscribe to never miss any of Luke's Hypergrowth Insights.